Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'm going to be doing some repairs to a free 2009 MacBook Pro that was given back in 2017 by a stranger in a computer store. He gave it to me after it was deemed not repairable by the computer store, and after he'd asked them to throw it away, I stepped in as a customer in line behind him and asked if I could have it. And sure enough, he gave me this 2009 MacBook Pro. Back in 2017, I did do a video on this and I've already tightened the hinges in the original video. However, the display is still struggling to stay up without falling back. I've also replaced and customized the keyboard in a previous video. However, I would like to repair the display issue, fix the trackpad which isn't clicking properly and reapply the thermal paste on the CPU and GPU. While I won't be completely overhauling it like I did with my 2011 MacBook Pro, I will be getting it back into good working order. To begin, I'm going to take off the bottom housing of this MacBook Pro and you can see this one is absolutely destroyed. It's really badly scratched and I will be swapping that out with one that is a little bit less uh, beaten up. Taking out the battery, I can then begin working on the internals of the MacBook Pro. I'm going to start by removing the fan. When I first removed the fan back in 2017, you can see the amount of dust that was clogged up inside. But now that I have the fan out, I can start by removing the logic board by disconnecting all of the connectors and flex cables, as well as take out all of the screws. The reason for this is I'm going to remove the display, but I also need to access the GPU and CPU so I can reapply the thermal paste between it and the heatsink. Now one of the screws on the logic board is actually rounded off, but luckily it's on a bracket which can be removed so I can just take it up as one big piece. I'll need to make clearance by removing the DVD drive to do that though, but with a couple more screws we can start to lift out the logic board. Now there's actually a cable connected underneath, so we'll need to be very careful of that and disconnect it before we remove the logic board from the Mac. It is routed underneath another cable, so I'll need to deroute that and get that out of the way. Once the board is removed from the computer, we can then start working on reapplying the thermal paste. I'll need to remove the four screws holding in the heatsink and taking that off, you can see all of the old thermal paste, which is hard and dry. So I'm going to get a Q-tip here with a bit of alcohol applied to it and I can just clean up the GPU here trying to get off as much of the old thermal paste as I can. Now there is a couple of really tiny components on top of the GPU so I wasn't able to get it completely clean but most of it is looking pretty good. I can then move across to the CPU and get that looking shiny and new. After our chips are looking nice and clean I'm going to move across to the heatsink and remove the remaining goo off of the back of that. I also gave it a clean with a alcohol q-tip just to bring it up nice and clean. I also cleaned the top of it as well as the core or whatever you want to call this piece making sure there was no dust or dirt in those fins. With those ready to go I'm going to give the logic board a clean with a toothbrush and some alcohol. This will hopefully remove most of the dust on top of the surface I'll also try and clean out the speaker as best I can to make it look as good as possible. While things won't be perfect, they will do just fine for this machine. Of course, I can't forget to do the ports, so I clean those up as best I could, although they look pretty dirty and stained from years of use, so they didn't improve too much. With everything clean and ready to go, I'm gonna apply the new thermal paste to the CPU and GPU, and then gradually tighten the four screws for the heatsink up to evenly apply pressure across all points. Once we tighten those screws up, our logic board is good to go. I'm now going to remove the LCD panel from the frame of the computer so I can fix up the hinges. I'll need to first remove the cable clips and then remove the three screws on each side holding the hinges in place. Derouting the speaker, I can remove the LCD panel from the MacBook and slide across the hinge cover and remove it from the display. I can then remove the three torque screws holding in the old hinges as these will need to be taken off and replaced with new ones. As far as I know, there's no way to repair the hinge, it just needs to be replaced. I'll need to do this on both sides so the hinges are equally as tight as each other. It's very important not to over tighten these screws as they are very easy to snap off as I've learned in a previous video. Once the new hinges have been installed, I can reinstall the hinge cover and the LCD is ready to go. 
I will give the screen a clean while it's off as it's a little bit easier to get into some of these grooves when the display isn't attached to the frame. While I have some room inside the computer, I thought I'd give the frame a good clean as it's got a good 10 years of dirt and grime all over it. Using more alcohol and a few Q-tips and a brush, I'm able to clean up the computer as best I can before I attach the screen back on. Once it's in position, I can screw it back into place. I like to start with one screw on each side first as this will correctly align the display. Once it's installed, I'll need to start working on this trackpad with a couple of screws it falls right out. I'll need to disconnect this cable as my replacement trackpad doesn't have one. Speaking of a replacement trackpad, this one cost me $21 on AliExpress and to install a trackpad into a MacBook Pro is actually pretty easy. While I have the trackpad out, it's a good time to clean this groove on the outer side of the casing. So with some more alcohol and more cleaning, I could remove all that grime in that groove. I can then position the trackpad and screw it back into place. And it's now time to reinstall the logic board back into the machine. I'll need to reroute that hidden cable and plug it back in. This part can be a little bit tricky as the cable is really short and can take some time to get aligned correctly. But once it's plugged in, we can position the logic board back into place and start screwing all of the screws back in. I can then put in the cable management clips for the display and plug the display connection back in. I can repeat that process on the other side, screwing its two screws back into place. I then gave the edge of the MacBook a little bit of a clean before I put the DVD drive back in. Now I could replace this with another hard drive or even an SSD. However, this laptop is only used by my mum and she doesn't need any additional space than the 240 gig SSD already installed. Once the DVD drive is in place, I can connect its flex cable and it's time to take a look at this fan. Now I started by cleaning it with a toothbrush and brushing in the fins. However, I wasn't able to remove all of the dust on the inside as I just couldn't reach it. So I had to get inside of this fan. Now with one screw and a couple of clips, I could tear it apart and actually give the entire inside a bit of a clean with yet again, more alcohol. While not perfect, it is a lot cleaner than it was before. Once that was good to go, I screwed it back together and screwed it back into place and started to connect all of the remaining connections that needed to be plugged into the logic board. Now I won't be replacing the battery in this unit as it still holds a good one and a half to two hours of charge. It does have a good seven or eight hundred charge cycles on it, but it's still performing just fine. So I'm going to be reinstalling that battery back in. I can screw it down with its obscure tri-wing screws, which are supposed to deter people from repairing it and plug it back in. I'm then going to flip the laptop over and power it up to make sure that trackpad is clicking correctly. If it's not, you just need to adjust the one screw uh, on the bottom of that to adjust the click. However, it's working just fine, so I'm going to give the inside one last clean. You can see the amount of grime coming off of that. Then I can run around with a microfiber cloth to clean up the inside. And finally, it's time to reinstall the bottom cover. For this, I'm going to be using the one I pulled off of my 2011 MacBook Pro as it is in a little bit rough shape, but it has all the feet on it as I've installed some new feet and it isn't as scratched as the old one. Once that's installed, I can finally give the outside of the MacBook Pro a quick clean with some cleaning alcohol and we're done. So this is it. The free MacBook Pro is finally all fixed up. For those wondering, this is a mid-2009 MacBook Pro powered by an Intel Core 2 Duo with 8 gigs of RAM. All up, I've replaced the keyboard, trackpad, and hinges. I've also installed an SSD, as the Mac had no drive when it was given to me. While a little rough around the edges, this MacBook Pro is adequate for my mum, who uses it to sync music to her iPod, back up her phone, and type documents. For those wondering how much I spent in total across the few years I've owned this machine, it comes in at a total cost of $65.48. Some of the parts I purchased were purely cosmetic, such as the hinge cover, but overall we've got a pretty decent little MacBook for my mum to use. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. I'll also leave link below the previous videos I've done on this MacBook Pro, so make sure to check those out as well. Also, follow me on my social media, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.